The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. First, a brief word to you fathers and mothers who want to give your children every opportunity you can possibly provide to help them get ahead. Did you know that you can plan now, years ahead, to send your boy or girl through college, no matter what may happen to you? This plan is called the Equitable Education Fund, the painless way to pay for your boy or girl's college education. In about 12 minutes, I'll give you the full details on this Equitable Education Fund. Be sure to listen carefully to this message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Subversive Activities. It's titled, The Interrupted Journey. The Communist Party in the United States has issued a blueprint to certain high-ranking members. This blueprint describes the organization of Communist Party revolutionary activities in this country. One sentence in that document reads, and I quote, Every communist must know that the party has a historical mission to fulfill. The establishment of the new world, a Soviet America. End quote. We thus have a clear statement of purpose on the part of those whose efforts are dedicated to the destruction of the American way of life. The goal of communism is total enslavement, and its program is directed against the nation in its entirety against every one of you. Tonight's FBI file opens at an outdoor concert on the outskirts of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In a back row, a woman sits listening so attentively that she does not notice a man take the seat beside her. Emily. Emily. Huh? Oh, hello, Lloyd. Sorry to start you. Please. Uh, the music will have to wait. I can't. Got an appointment in town. I have a job for you. Oh? What is it? Contact Benola. When? Tomorrow. Tell him to print you a set of identification cards. All right. Which ones? Social security, driver's license, gasoline credit slip, and an engineer's union card. Have him made out in the name of William R. Young. Who's he? It's the name a friend of ours will adopt. Oh. He's coming to this country within the next month, so tell Panola to rush the cards through. So Mr. Young must be pretty important. Yeah, very important. Well, that's the intermission. Uh, stay here. I'd rather walk out alone. Uh, where do you want me to make the delivery? My apartment. The following afternoon, at the Philadelphia field office of your FBI, Special Agent Taylor approaches the desk of Security Supervisor Paul Dawson. You send for me, Mr. Dawson? Yes, Taylor. Sit down. Thanks. We just got a report from the Pittsburgh office. One of their undercover men in the party is a printer named Panola. He was just told to print up identification papers for a William R. Young. Young. It's a fictitious name. Oh. Panola reported they were for somebody coming into the country within the next 30 days. Coming in here? He doesn't know which port will be used, but it'll be on the eastern coast, so every office along the Atlantic's been alerted. Oh, I see. We don't know who this visitor really is, what he looks like, or when he's coming. All Panola could say is that he's very important to the party. Well, can uh, Panola give us any more help? Yes, he's making a mistake in the name on one of the cards. Instead of R, he'll make the middle initial W. Mm -hmm. That's about all he can do without putting himself on a spot. And who gets the cards? They're being picked up by a woman named Emily Gray. Pittsburgh checked on her and sent us this memo. She's never been identified with party activities before. 
Now, we don't know why Young's coming, but if they're being this careful, it's probably on a big job. Yeah, sounds that way. Four freighters from Russia or her satellites are due in here this week, Taylor. I want you and Johnson to cover their arrival. All right, sir. If you need any more men, let me know. Right there. Hello, Lloyd. Come in. Thank you. I've got the cards. All four of them? Yes, right here. Fine. Heard any more news? Uh, about what? Who the cards are for? No, but I found out why he's coming. He's an expert at factory production methods. Oh, why send him here? I have a tour all through the country and stop off at factories where we've got friends. Mm hmm. Show him how to slow down production without making himself look like saboteurs. Quite a job. Yeah. Uh, better take your car to the garage and have him check everything. Huh? We're going someplace? Uh, Philadelphia. That's where we deliver the cards. To whom? I don't know. When we get near Philadelphia, I have a number to call, though. When do we leave? Tomorrow morning. <laughs> Dawson, we got pictures of everybody coming off that Russian freighter this morning. That's fine. Johnson's dropping him off to be developed now. Is he coming by here? Yes, sir. Good. We got another report from the Pittsburgh office. Oh, any more information on our visitor? No, but this woman, Gray, picked up the identification cards early this morning at Panola's. She went from there to an apartment. Mm -hmm. Visited a man named Lloyd Boone. He's a known member of the party. Uh, Mr. Dawson. Uh, come in, Johnson. The lab will send those pictures up as soon as they're developed. Okay. Now, what happened to this man and woman? They left the apartment house a few minutes later. They got into the woman's car, headed toward the turnpike. Uh -huh. Pittsburgh has two cars keeping the surveillance on them. They're traveling in a gray Ford sedan. Here's the license number. Thanks. Are they definitely headed here? We still don't know. But it's our job to pick up the surveillance of that car on the turnpike just west of Harrisburg. Taylor, you take car number one. All right. Johnson, we'll ride number two. Yes, sir. Take over from the Pittsburgh car in front of the Ford, and we'll relieve the car that's trailing him. What ident are we using? The two Pittsburgh cars are first base and shortstop. Your car will be center field. We'll be catcher. Got it. Let's go get the cars. Hello, center field. Where are you? On the baseline, 10 miles west of Harrisburg. Have you heard from shortstop? Yes, he was 30 miles out at 3.15. Is he in front of the Eagle? Was when I talked to him. I'll check and call you back. Right. Hello, shortstop. Center field. I'm 10 miles west of Harrisburg. Where are you? 12 miles west and about a mile in front of the Eagle. I see a cut through. I'll make my turn and start heading east. I ought to be able to pick you up when you come up over that hill. I'll call you as soon as I do. Hello, catcher. I could hear your end, but shortstop didn't come in too clear. Where is he? He's about two miles west. I'll relieve him around where we pass that emergency gas station. Good. He's still in front of the Eagle, then. That's right. Wait a minute. I can see a car in my rearview mirror now just coming up over the hill. Might be him. Establish contact again and call back after you take over. Hello, shortstop. I see you, center field. The Eagle is a half mile in back of me. Pace 55 miles an hour. They made any stops yet? None at all. That's the Eagle coming over the hill. Picking up the Eagle. The Eagle is yours. Hello, catcher. Did you hear that? Yes, we got it all. When you hit Harrisburg, drop behind the Eagle and we'll pick up the front end. Right. I'll give you a position and pace every mile till we make the switch. Well, there's no doubt about where they're going now. It's Philadelphia, all right. Yeah? Hello, catcher. Center field. There's no traffic to screen me from the Eagle, so I'm passing. Pace is 55. All right. Johnson, we'll drop back and pick up behind him. 
Are we going to blanket the fort right into Philly? I don't know yet. When we get close to town, I might call in and have two others take over. Well, there goes Taylor. Mm -hmm. Can you see the fort? Uh, yeah. There's two cars back. Moving up now. Don't fall too far back this time. Uh -huh. This about right? Yes. Hello, center field. We've dropped back of the Eagle. Pace is still 55. I'll maintain pace. Hey, Mr. Dawson, they're pulling over the inside lane. Hello, center field. The Eagle is slowing down. There's a roadhouse up ahead. I'm just about there. Pull into the parking lot. Right. The Eagle just started flashing its right turn blinker. I'm in the parking lot now. They should be coming in any second. Go on inside. Take your portable transmitter and keep in touch. Hello, catcher. I'm inside the roadhouse. The eagle has just entered. He's at the counter now getting some change. He's heading for the phone booth. I'm going to take the one next to him. He's just coming into the next booth. just left the booth. There's a pad on the wall in this one. Maybe he wrote down that address. I'm going into the next booth. Yes, there's a pad in here, too. Uh, wait a minute. There are indentations on this top sheet. It might be the address for the party that he's meeting. Yes, I've got it. 193 Madison Street. Turn in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official file of your FBI. Now for a moment, let's listen in on a conversation that may be vitally important in the future success of a little boy named Billy Darrow, who's celebrating his first birthday today. Billy's father has asked Fred Barton, his Equitable Society representative, to drop in to talk things over. Thanks for stopping by, Mr. Barton. I wanted to ask you about this college education insurance. You know, Billy's a year old today, and... My wife and I thought this might be a good time to start. Well, if you start an equitable education fund now, you can have Billy's education all paid for by the time he's ready to enter college. Well, that's what we figured on. What's more, if you should die any time between now and, say, 1968, Billy still gets the education you want him to have. Billy's equitable education fund becomes fully paid up. Until he's ready to go to college, equitable holds the money for him and pays interest on the full amount. From the day this equitable plan goes into effect, Billy's college education is assured. Well, I'd really get a kick out of knowing that. Well, you understand what the equitable education fund actually is, Mr. Darrow. You're saving up for Billy's college expenses in an endowment life insurance and spreading the cost over 16 or 17 years instead of taking a beating and having to make financial sacrifices during the four years he's in college. Well, the only question in my mind is, can I afford to buy it? Mr. Darrow, you'll be surprised how money grows when you keep on making regular payments for 15 or 16 years. Another thing, by starting now, when Billy is still so young, you can spread out your payments over more years and pay less in each individual year. 
Let's say you decide on a $4,000 equitable education fund. At your age, that would... If you have children of your own, why not get the cost of an equitable education fund from your equitable representative? These equitable men don't go in for high-pressure methods. They give you the information you need and let you make up your own mind. Get in touch with your equitable representative soon. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Interrupted Journey. In connection with tonight's case, we bring you a message from director J. Edgar Hoover. Mr. Hoover says, and I quote, Your FBI asks each of you to report all information you may possess which relates to espionage, sabotage, or subversive activities. However, the protection of the nation's internal security is a twofold responsibility. It must not only safeguard our secrets, but it must also guarantee the continuation of the civil liberties of every citizen. Please do not attempt to conduct your own investigation. Please do not engage in malicious gossip or idle rumor about any person's political activities. Vigilante action and witch hunts only contribute to hysteria. By making your information available to your FBI, without attempts at evaluation or an effort to draw your own conclusions, you will not only be safeguarding the rights of the innocent, you will be making your own contribution to the nation's general security program. Remember, if you have any suspicions about espionage, sabotage, or subversive activity, do not investigate on your own. I repeat, do not investigate on your own. Please look at page one of your local directory and call the nearest field office of your FBI. We need no secret weapons to uproot communism in this country, nor any illegal activities on the part of our citizens. This constitutional republic has stood the test of time. If we all do our jobs calmly and sanely, it will continue to stand. Tonight's file continues at the Philadelphia field office later that evening. Mr. Dawson? Yes, Taylor? That address Lloyd Boone wrote down turned out to be a toy shop. The number he called is the shops, and the place is owned by the Mr. Walker that he spoke to. You checked on him? Yes, sir. Um, he's 53 years old, born in Cleveland, came to Philadelphia as a child with his parents. He's owned the toy shop for five years. He has a bad credit rating, suspected of belonging to the party since 1941. I see. Johnson reported in on Boone and Emily Gray. They checked into the Hotel Century. They met for dinner a few minutes ago in the coffee shop. I'll send Hopkins over to relieve him. Oh, and I called the port authorities. They say two freighters are due in tomorrow from Satellite Nations. I'll have photographers at the pier. Miller and Reed can cover the first one. Hoffman and Riley can get pictures of the other crew. Mm -hmm. I've got Adams keeping a surveillance on Walker. I can relieve Adams in the morning if you like. No, I've got another job for you. Oh? There'll be a truckload of empty barrels delivered to the garage at 7.30 a.m. Bore a peephole in one of the barrels. All right, sir. Take a walkie-talkie and a movie camera with you. Once you're set, the truck will be driven to Madison Street and parked in front of the toy shop. Mm. I want pictures of everyone going in or out of the shop. This is the place, Lloyd. Yes, morning. Can I show you something? We'd like to see Mr. Walker. I'm Mr. Walker. Oh, Lloyd Boone. Oh, hello. How are you? And uh, uh, this is Miss Gray. How, How do you do? do? Uh, did you bring the package? They're all in here. Good. Mm-hmm. Have you heard from Mr. Young? Not yet. I'd like to meet him. Maybe we can arrange it before he starts his trip. Uh, wait. This card is made out wrong. Huh? The name on it is William W. Young. The others are William R. That's right. Yes. Maybe we can change it right here. No, 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 no. He has to show his union card at every factory. When does he get here? Today. You'd better call your contact in Pittsburgh. Have him print another card. One of you fly back and pick it up. Uh, this will be Young's address while he's here. Mail him the card the minute it comes off the press. <laughs> Mr. 
Center field calling catcher. Center field calling catcher. This is catcher. I'm on my third roll of film. Has the eagle reached the nest? Yes, he came early, stayed a few minutes, and flew away. Any other familiar birds? I didn't recognize any. We got complete sets of pictures of everybody off those two freighters. How soon do you want to start comparing them with the ones that I've taken here? As soon as I've made arrangements to relieve you. There's a vacant office in the building across the street from you. I'm trying to get it now. Uh, hold it a minute. Hello? Yes? She has? When? Okay. Yes, right away. The Eagle's companion just called the transportation desk at the hotel and booked passage back to Pittsburgh. She told the desk she had to get on the first plane. Maybe something's about to pop. Could be. I'll get a relief camera over there and we'll start developing your film. Good afternoon. Hello. Can I show you something? Yes, I'd like to buy a dollhouse for my little girl. Any special color? Uh, red. Hello. I'm Walker. I'm glad to meet you. How was your trip? Mm, not good, not bad. Have you got my papers? Everything but the engineer's union card. They made a mistake on that one, so you'll have to wait while they print a duplicate. How long? A day or two. I'll come back for it. Oh, you don't have to. It'll be mailed to you at this address. You've got an apartment there. As William R. Young? Yes. Here are the cards that turned out right. And, uh... Here are the keys to the apartment. Uh, thanks. You'll find clothes, money, and everything else you need. Uh, don't get in touch with me again unless there's trouble. That's the end of reel two. Is reel three on the other projector? Yes, sir. Let's see it, please. Oh, I checked on those two freighters that came in yesterday. What's the story? They're due to load up tomorrow and then sail. What time? Six and 6.30 tomorrow night. You heard from Pittsburgh? Yes, Lloyd Boone got back there. He and the girl have any more meetings? Not unless it was by phone. Huh. We're ready to roll. Go ahead. Now, there, that's Walker approaching the entrance after lunch. Mm -hmm. Business was kind of slow. Yeah, so I see. This couple here bought a boat. His face doesn't look familiar. Well, there's another shot of the couple coming out. Mm. Nobody entered or left the shop for the next 20 minutes. And I started the camera again as this man came uh, toward Stop the, the film. Go back to that frame with the man's full face toward the camera. Right. He looked familiar. Oh. Uh -huh. Taylor, you take this pile of pictures. They're the crew of the freighter. All right. Is this the shot you meant? Yes. Let's see the stack here. I got it. Oh. This is him. He's off the freighter Bosporus. Taylor, you and Johnson find out who he is. Here's the ident on that sailor, Mr. Dawson. Who is he? His real name is Erath. He's the first mate on the Bosporus. Didn't show to sleep aboard the ship either night. Wasn't on hand today when loading started. He hasn't shown up at the toy shop either. How about Walker's home? No. We've had a surveillance there. Uh, he could be any place in the country by now. I'm afraid so. How about sending out an I.O.? Washington wants us to wait till the Bosporus leaves tonight so we can be sure he's jumping ship. Oh, I see. That's about all we can do. Till that boat leaves without him, he hasn't shown evidence of going through with the conspiracy. Yeah. Well, Mr. Dawson. Come in, Johnson. Now, this teletype just came in for you. Thanks. From Pittsburgh. Hmm? Panola reports mistake made in William Young's Engineers Union card discovered. He printed new card, delivered today to Emily Gray. She sent air mail to Philadelphia this afternoon. No idea what address in Philadelphia. Well, that means he's probably still here. Mm-hmm. Panola also reports learning from Emily Gray reason for visit. Alias William R. Young is expert slowing down production lines. Well, no wonder he wanted the Union card. Yes. If that card was airmailed from Pittsburgh this afternoon, it'll either be delivered special delivery tonight or regular delivery tomorrow morning. How about supplying every postman with Young's picture? There isn't time. Mm. We'll just have to cover every terminal in the city. You two take the Broad Street station and check back every hour. Jim, 
there's no word yet at the office on Young. Anything on Walker? No. When the shop closed, he went right home. The Bosporus held up sailing till an hour ago. They finally pulled out with Young absent. They held up sailing, huh? Surprise? Yeah, kind of. That must mean they didn't know Young was jumping ship. Well, what difference does that make? Oh, none, really, but if they weren't told, it must mean this was a well-guarded secret shared only by those in on the actual assignment. Mm. It's just more proof this is a big job. Well, there's another train that Young isn't catching. Uh-huh. Wait a minute, Rudy. Look. Hey, that's him. Yep, he's running for that train. He might catch it. Better make sure he doesn't. Wait a minute. No, you don't. Well, I've, I've got a ticket for that train. And we've got a warrant that'll keep you here. Lloyd Boone, Howard Walker, Emily Gray, and the man who called himself William Young were convicted of conspiracy to violate the federal sabotage statutes after trial in a federal court. The arrest of the three men and the girl in tonight's case may possibly lead some people to ask why every known communist and communist sympathizer isn't taken into custody and thrown into jail. That is not the American idea of justice. And in these matters of internal security, your FBI has a firm policy. That policy states that the Bureau will arrest only those committing overt acts by taking part of preaching or practicing doctrines leading to the overthrow of the government by force. There will be no wholesale arrests inspired by mass or individual hysteria. No roundup of thousands for the sake of making headlines. However, anyone who violates any laws over which your FBI has jurisdiction be he communist or not, can expect action from the men of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For in their oath of office, these men promise to uphold and defend the Constitution, a promise they have always kept and will continue to keep. Now, a quick review of the advantages of an equitable education fund. First, it's the painless way to pay for a college education. You spread the cost over many years instead of taking a beating in four. Second, it's sure. From the moment you start, you're certain your children will get the kind of education you want them to have, regardless of what happens to you. So why delay? Ask your equitable representative for full information on an equitable education fund. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, fraudulent bankruptcy. Its title, The Telltale Cargo. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Harry Carey, Jr., Gladys Holland, Lamont Johnson, Charles Maxwell, Bill Mims, Ted Osborne, and Les Tremaine. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The telltale cargo on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for A Life in Your Hands, starring Lee Bowman, which follows immediately. America is sold on ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.